Hello, and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speak Webinar Series and Podcast. I'm Stacey Roman, and I will be moderating this discussion today. We are pleased to have Dr. Florence Berju Blackler, author and researcher specializing in the study of Islamic norms in a secular context, join us to discuss Muslim led, -led riots, France and flames. Dr. Berju Blackler will speak for 15 minutes, then open up for questions for another 15 minutes, should you wish to ask a question. Please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Dr. Florence Bajou Blackler. Hello. Um, yes, so I'm an anthropologist. I'm, uh, um, my first encounter with uh, Muslim Brotherhood was 30 years ago. Uh, I was a student. Uh, I was preparing a master in anthropology in the University of Bordeaux. Um, and my specialty now is the study of the Islamic normativities in Europe. I've spent many years to study the global halal market, which is for me one of the most powerful vehicle of the Islamic fundamentalist uh, norms in all sectors, consumption, uh, culture, economy. Um, so let me talk about the, the, the situation in France uh, at the moment and the riots so the, the, the riots taking place in France at the moment have echoes of the George Floyd case in the US. Um, despite the appearance of the young man being killed in circumstances that the video shows to, to be damning for the police officer, uh, the two cases, uh, those of uh, George and Nael, have little in common. Uh, little in common if we accept the eagerness of decolonial and woke groups to denounce it as a political assassination by a police force that kills racialized and underprivileged young people. That's the story. Uh, the policeman was jailed in the days that followed, but the crowd is still uh, demanding justice for the young men. This angel, as uh, the footballer Kylian Mbappé put it, was driving without a license in a car that didn't belong to him and who, in his frantic race, endangered the lives of several people before uh, being stopped, alas, uh, fatally. Two groups immediately called for revenge. One forming the group known as Jeune de Banlieue, Youth of uh, Suburb, and another group, a political party called La France Insoumise, Rebellious France, at the left of the left wing, uh, noisy and influential in the, in the parliament. Uh, this party uh, did not attempt to calm down the riot, even though uh, it scored exceptionally high in uh, the suburbs at the last elections. The intersection of these two groups is formed by another, the Muslims. And amongst them, the Muslims, um, the, the, the Islamists, and in particular uh, within the Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood, want to turn the future of the Muslim nation, the Ummah, into a cultural, economic, and political force. For the brothers, uh, the riots are both uh, an advantage and a disadvantage. An advantage because riots are the proof of the failure of assimilation of Muslims into the secular France. A disadvantage because they want these young Muslims to form an elite rather than to be pro pro proletarianized. So what do the Brotherhood want for young European and uh, French Muslims? To find out, we can, for example, read the document called Strategy for Islamic Action Outside the Islamic World that was inspired by the Muslim Brotherhood and in particular the French branch and published in 2000 in Qatar. This document signed from ISESCO, which is the Islamic equivalent of UNESCO, lists the measures to be taken to manage young Muslims in the non-Muslim world, their children and their grandchildren. The goal is to make uh, them to, I quote, respect Allah's commandments and prohibitions to adorn themselves with Islamic ethics and to reject secular values 
that would make them unhappy and undisciplined. For the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, because they are Muslims, they will be impossible anyway to assimilate in France. So only Islam can provide these young Muslims with an education that is, I quote again, generous and tolerant based on the good, the right, equity and uh, duty to act within the framework of the Sharia, which is based on two principles, ordering the good and prohibiting the evil. End of quotation. Only Islamic education can uh, conceive and develop educational visions and methods capable of sparing children from the problems char characteristic of life in a Western environment and freeing them from the cultural split from which they suffer. End of quote. These young Muslims must therefore be protected. Uh, against uh, cultural invasion and alienation, and to be guaranteed the cultural security and immunity necessary for the development of the Muslim personality. These proposals of the Muslim bro Brotherhood are inadmissible in a front, in the France, in a country that is very attached to national education and secularism. For most French people, um, secularism is a means of preserving national unity and avoiding religious wars. It is preferable to keep religious practice in a private sphere for oneself, even if religious expression uh, um, uh, outside uh, the home is not forbidden. You can, you can show your uh, belonging, uh, your religious uh, uh, belonging to in the street. There is no problem. But uh, state representatives must not display religious symbols, but citizens may do so as long as they do not jeopardize public security. France don't want community-based displays, just as races are not political markers. For most of the French, race is a biological and not a political fact. There has, in France, never been any racial segregation regime, and racism has always been criminalized. The Muslim Brotherhood proposed to use international law diversity, with reference, for example, to the United Nations, to convince Westerners not to seek to assimilate young Muslims. And the subversion is here, claiming the right to not apply the common right in the name of the common right. Today, Muslim Brotherhood openly asks the French state to be untrusted for the re-education of young Muslims. For example, a, pre a preacher in the north of France has published just yesterday a video saying, these young people, talking about the riots, these young people could have gone through our mosque, we could have done some educational work. Um, um, we can be mediators. We are factors of preventing violence. And last, isn't it in society's interest to promote these cultural and religious associations to help young people to have principles and values? This um, allows me to go back to my book that explains the history of the development of brotherhood in Europe. So this is a, a book I just published uh, called uh, Le Ferisme et ses réseaux, Brotherism and his uh, networks, um, in, in which I develop uh, their ideology in Europe, their strategy, uh, and its doctrine was satire. Um, if, uh, if I can summarize, I describe brotherism as a system of action. It's a transnational movement that wants to conquer the world and therefore non-Muslim countries by first making it Sharia compatible. Its strategy of implantation and extension is different from that of Islamist groups in the Muslim countries because it is primarily based on culture and on economy in a globalized world dominated by the ideologies of free trade and inclusiveness. 
The doctrine of this movement, movement is the Wasatiya, Islam of the Middle Way, which was uh, theorized and modernized by Youssef al Kardawi. Uh, the Sheikh was inspired by the founder of Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan al Banna, and also by the Hindu Pakistani, Abu Allah Maududi. The Brotherism, as I conceive it and I define it in my book, uh, is not a theology or neither a legal school. It is what I call the system of action that sets out to steer the various theological and legal components of Sunni Islam from a middle position to fulfill the ultimate prophecy of the establishment of the caliphate on earth. Brotherism uses the skills and specificities of each of the schools of the movement, Wahhabu Salafi, Jihadi, Sufi, liberal, to redirect and to guide them towards the objective um, by infiltrating the environments, public institutions by sectors, education, university, health, justice, police, but also private enterprise in order to influence them and to modify <clears throat> their uh, DNA, to make them Sharia compatible. It works very methodically by plans, concealing itself and acting mostly within the framework of democratic laws. In our modern societies, brotherhood has a preference for the influence through the culture and the economic because the political way is not accessible for now. The anti-racist and the anti-radicalization networks of NGOs in Europe are widely infiltrated by the Brotherhood who seek, and this uh, la latest generations, who seek to impose the idea of a mistreatment of Muslims in Europe. And therefore, we want to promote special rights for them, positive discrimination. They, defi they, they define, for example, anti-Muslim hate as a hate which seeks to dehumanize Muslims. Of course, this has never been proved or any demonstration of it that the Western European democracy seek to dehumanize Muslim. But what they do not want, uh, what the, the European Union don't want is to, uh, to have an Islamic fundamentalism uh, that the Brotherhood convey. Uh, I, I will finish that to, to lay place to the, to the questions. Um, what is uh, strange in Europe is that uh, the, the EU, uh, in particular, continue to propagate the thesis of Islamophobia, um, which is the main um, instrument for the propagation of uh, bro brotherism, um, despite of lack of evidence of uh, its existence. What I mean by Islamophobia here is the structural or state Islamophobia, not, uh, I, I don't mean racism, which, is a, which exists and not just for Muslims. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so the first question is from JL asking, these riots seem to shatter the myth of a Muslim population that can be integrated into European cultures. Uh, it also has a parallel with the riots that took place in Israel in the mixed cities last year. Uh, is the so-called moderate Islam a myth, or is this still possible to achieve? Well, I, I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a myth, because I knew it. I mean, I've been working on this uh, topic for 30 years, and I remember 30 years ago, I, I've, I've seen uh, an Islam which was not fundamentalist. It was possible to not wear the hijab, to not be uh, attached to any uh, halal food, uh, uh, it was possible to uh, uh, to to be um, a Muslim uh, as 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 a, as a self Islam as a, as, as a self definition. Um, it was possible even to say that uh, I'm not a Muslim anymore. And this uh, this is not possible anymore. If you say that you are not Muslim anymore, then you will have trouble. So it's preferable preferable to 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 hide it. For example. Um, the other um, indication of the, uh, the, the influence of Muslim Brotherhood um, on young Muslims is um, it, it can be uh, given by, by numbers. For example, we know that Muslim Brotherhood exerts a great deal of influence over mosques, 
they were the first to address young Muslims in French uh, with someone like Tariq Ramadan, with a speech of pride, women and men incitating the, to wear the veil, uh, which had almost disappeared before, uh, incitating to eat halal, which was completely new, uh, to live in the halal way of life. It's, it's, a, it's a completely new formula. And today, uh, we know that 65% of the French young Muslims think the Sharia is more important than the civil way, uh, law, which is, uh, which is uh, considerable. Um, in France, uh, we have 10 million uh, Muslims, over 68 mil millions of French. Um, 10 million is the highest um, um, number. It's between eight and, and 10. Uh, with great variations over on the national territory. Um, the pressure uh, over uh, the, the teachers at school to reintroduce the veil, uh, which is forbidden at school since uh, 2004, is increasing. Um, teachers are being prevented from giving certain lessons that are not compatible with the Sharia law. Uh, almost 60% of secondary school teachers censor themselves, don't say uh, some courses or avoid some topics, um, which is a huge number. Um, the Ramadan also uh, fasting is increasingly followed by very young children. Uh, we have seen recently games of prayers uh, in the school uh, by seven years old children, very, very, very young. And um, yeah, and, and this is in rupture with the population in France, for example, there is a recent poll that shows that 77% uh, of French people are in favor of banning female football players, um, um, hijab, um, which is, which, which is, uh, very contrasting with the, the, the trends of Muslims at the moment. Thank you. Uh, David S. Levine asks, how is it that North African Jews do so well in France, but not North African Muslims? Or how is it that Hindus from India do so well in the UK, but not Pakistani Muslims? Well, Jews in France are, are in France for many, many centuries, um, while Muslims are arrived numerous uh, during the 1970s. Uh, so it, it's completely different. Uh, and well, to say that they do well, they do Jew, Jewish, uh, do like other French. Uh, and of course, because they are more recent uh, in the territory, Muslims are still amongst uh, the, the, the less uh, rich populations. But this, uh, this is changing. We have now middle class, Muslim middle class, who do very well. Yes, I think uh, he was asking, is, is there some sort of assimilation that is not happening? Or, or is, is this, uh, are Muslims assimilating to the French society and nationalism? Y yes, Muslims are assimilating quite well. Um, you can see them in, in political parties. Uh, you can see them in all the the, the sectors of uh, of the um, uh, enterprise or or public institutions. Uh, they, they they are amongst French. There, there is no um, the, the idea of uh, Islamophobia has been constructed uh, since I would say the 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 media the social medias um, uh, in, in middle two thousand we uh, we start to hear about Islamophobia before that uh, we knew that there was there was racism uh, there was racism and especially uh, during the seventies. Uh, because there was tension between Algeria and France uh, for historical reasons, um, but uh, this was that there was a reason for that, and that that was not uh, um, constructed reasons like uh, religious belonging. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, clarifying that. 
Uh, Andrea Spindel asks, none of the Western or few of the Western governments have banned uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and associated groups and mosques, but Muslim countries have done so. Should France, Canada, US, Australia ban the Muslim Brotherhood and vet immigrants? Well, I don't know if it's possible uh, because it's extremely difficult to uh, uh, to um, identify uh, the Brotherhood as the Muslim Brotherhood as a confrérie. Uh, it's difficult. But they also have infused in society uh, the, what I call the brotherism, which is not uh, the, 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 the brotherhood itself, which is more uh, its ideology. And this ideology completely infused uh, the, the Islamic field uh, in France today. So even if we uh, forbid the, the Muslim uh, brotherhood as a, as a group, as a it may not be uh, very efficient, uh, and especially uh, they are acting within the law. So we will have to to fight an ideology, which is extremely difficult. Uh, we have freedom of expression. How can we do that? Exactly. Uh, so Hugh Kitson asks, uh, I have seen reports from the recent rioting, including attacks against Jewish properties. Is this true? You have to understand that this riot is the fact of individuals. There is no groups um, at the initiating this riot. Uh, you have groups who have uh, tried to instrumentalize these riots, but neither Muslims or, nor uh, the Parti La, La France Insoumise are, are behind this. Uh, they try to capture and to orientate the, the movement, but, but, they, but they failed. I mean, this at the moment, the, 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 the riot is uh, decreasing and, uh, and nobody can control it. Uh, it just, it's just decreasing because the police uh, have shown their, their muscles. Thank you. Leslie Shaw asks, what can we do to stop the advance of the Muslim Brotherhood in Europe? I think, uh, first of all, we need to identify it. We need to, uh, to understand how it works, what, what he wants to do. When I talk about Sharia compatibility, for example, to understand how they proceed. Uh, they have what I call a vision, an identity, and a plan, VIP. Uh, we, we, we need to understand how they think, uh, how they act, what what where they want to go where where they want us to go and if we are clever enough uh if we are patient because they are uh, we will understand how we can behave to avoid uh the the way they want us to go um this is this cannot be uh, this is why i wrote my book to 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 um to make uh, the, the, the public understand how it works and, and what they can do as individual to avoid um, a society which will be Sharia compatible and then Islamic, because that's their point. They want, uh, uh, they want to destroy the, demo the democracy, uh, which they started to do by uh, uh, acting against the freedom of expression. It's, it's very serious. I, I sh I, I explained that 60% of the teachers censor themselves, so it's it's very serious. But there's not just teachers; there there are also just ordinary citizens or, or the cultural movements. Or there are things that we cannot say anymore. So uh, so and they want a theocracy, and we have a democracy, and they are not compatible. So uh, I did this book, I wrote this book very detailed uh, that shows the story of how it happens, uh, how it uh, proceeds to, uh, to, um, to re-equip uh, people and make them more strong uh, to, uh, to defend themselves. Uh, it will not be a war, uh, it will be an um, uh, uh, intelligence war. Um, not uh, not fighting with guns, but fighting with our, our mind or our, our, our intelligence. Uh, 
Absolutely. Uh, Taffy Gould asks, uh, will there this result in more influence of Marine Le Pen uh, and anti-immigration? And can that possibly succeed or is it too late? Well, um, it is sure that these uh, riots will help the, the movement, uh, the, the right, very wide, right wing party to, to win. But um, I'm not sure that the Rassemblement National of Marine Le Pen uh, will be able to uh, tackle this problem. Um, I think all parties much, m must uh, uh, work together. Just one party will never be able to, to stop that. So we need to, to depoliticize the problem uh, in terms of uh, party political party. We need to work all together against the theocracy as Democrats. Absolutely. And uh, with the secular secularism in France being held so dear, uh, is there any chance of the Islamists joining the government and, and trying to enact any any Sharia law into the legislation? But they are. They are trying. Yeah. They are. Uh, up to now, they don't succeed to change the law, but they try. For example, uh, they try to remove the law against uh, hijab in the school. Uh, they try hard. And uh, they try, for example, uh, to pass a law to allow the hijab in the sports. Uh, they failed, but they will try again, 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 because they, they have a long time. They have a long perspective. They will not stop. Uh, to try until we said, no, we don't want that. And we know what you want us to do and we don't want it. If uh, Until we are not firm, they will carry on. Uh, Steve says, it's too. is it too late for France? And how can the U.S. learn before it's too late for here? Well, I, I don't think it's too late. It's never too late anyway. Uh, but um, we have a warning and uh, um, the, the, these riots are not just social economic problems. They are also uh, cultural and religious problems. We still don't really want to do to, to see it as it uh, as a religious problem and, and it's a pity. So it really depends on, uh, on our faculty of saying, identifying the problems. Uh, if we, and I think things are changing in a positive way. People understand what is, uh, that Islam is not Islamism, um, that uh, we can have an Islam, but we don't want Islamism. And so we, we just need to see the difference. And people are learning with uh, what happened in, in the media, with the social media. Um, and uh, they don't uh, accept to be uh, treated as uh, extreme right or fascist or Nazi. Uh, they don't accept it anymore. They, they can stand and say, well, no, we don't want this, but doesn't mean we are fascist, extremist, or, or so on. So the mentality are changing, and I think it's the only way. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful way to wrap it up. Uh, M.G. Bod Bodish uh, asks, will your book be available or is your book available in English? Well, not yet, because I'm still uh, looking for a publisher. Uh, it's it's selling very well in France, I must say, as, as surprising because usually social science books are not very well sold. But this one uh, has found its public. And I hope you will find an a English uh, uh, public, an English speaker public. Absolutely. We hope that uh, that comes out soon in English. Uh, and for any French speakers, <laughs> it is available now. I think I saw it on Amazon there. All right. Well, thank you so much. We've come to the close of our webinar. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Uh, Berju Blackler, for joining us today. Thank you. Of Thank course. You. For our viewers, please join us Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern for an update with Alex Selsky this week. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.